But I feel better when she's dragged in front of the courts and justice has been served. Oh, you're talking about Jenny. No. Oh, well, well I thought it might have been, you know, with her running Elizabeth over. And... No. Well, I'm not making it up. Elizabeth told me herself yesterday. Well, I'm not in the market for idle gossip. We have enough with these magazines. Thank you very much. I'll leave you to it then, Rita. Yes. Well, you know where I am. If yes. you need an ear or a GNT. Yeah. Yes. Now, what can I get you? Go to cola cubes, please. Oh, cola cubes, yes, I'll get them. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I could have sworn you'd more than me. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Accidents will happen. Well, if they didn't, the medical centre would be on a three-day week. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'll, I'll, I'll pay for them. Oh, don't worry. Just go get a dustpan and brush, Lord. Oh, I'm such an idiot. <sighs> My plastered on smile just won me a keep the change tip from Ken Barlow. You see? Yeah. It's whole 15 pence. Maybe we could go on the run with it. <laughs> <laughs> Look at them. More tragedy than Romeo and Juliet. Who? Johnny and Jenny. What are you on about? She tried to run Elizabeth over. No. That was him. Oh. Hello, old Jackson. What, where have you been? Just keep it down, will you? So he slept with Elizabeth, and now Jenny's gone all mad max on her. I've just remembered that I need I need to do something in the back. You can manage here, can't you? Don't let them get to you. No, I won't. heard of a blobfish? No, why? Hmm. I was just reminded of one looking at your sad little face. Oh. Someone upset you? I'm fine. Look, I have to listen to people drone on about all sorts at work. I'm like a free therapist. So come on, you can tell me. Honestly, there's nothing to tell. Wonderful. Very well, then. You can listen to my woes about poor Elizabeth staying in court. Oh, I wish I could, but I've got to uh, get back and make the tea. Doing a shin of beef takes forever. See ya. Andrea? I'm sorry, darling, but you haven't got enough X chromosomes for these two idiots. Mate, no, 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 I'm not your mate. Okay, you wasted my time. Oh dear. And I thought you two were better than that. So did I. We are. You were rating women out of ten. Well, I was. It's <laughs> really, because you two are no more than a ooh, six, seven at best. You're, You're the six. six. Well, I think you've been pretty generous there, Moira, to be honest. I'm talking about personality. I'd go for... What do you say, Shona? Oh, I don't know. Three and a four? Well, you're the one going out with a four. Maybe not for much longer. Well, hold on, I'm not a three. Call me a cliché, but I go for tall, dark and handsome. Shiny, thick head of hair. <laughs> Suave. Strong eyebrows. <coughs> you do realise that interviewing based on gender is illegal? Anyone! Not wearing fancy dress. It's instant snog me time, got it? Ooh, fancy I'll go fancy dress me. <laughs> just put the ears on, kid, and look sharp. A bit rude. I'm just a cheeky japes to me. No, people actually stop me on the street to tell me how wacky I am. <laughs> really? Mm. My nickname at school was Wacky Races. <laughs> well, what of them? God, mine was Bike Ride. Was it? Yeah, because I did a sponsored bike ride for Kids in Crisis. Raised 150 quid. Mm. Yeah. Hey, sex bomb. Sorry. Oh, whoops. Cheeky James story alert. <laughs> Are you OK? Yeah, just trying to avoid fog on features. Well, you look good. True your face. <laughs> oh, I think it suits you. Oh, I think you might need glasses. Killjoy. Oh, I used to love Killjoy. Sorry? I'm an antique sky detective. Are you on drugs? God, your brother's well fit, Rana. Uh, I don't see it myself. Uh, no, and that would be incest. <laughs> Your mum and dad must have been gorged to end up with stunners like you. Are they coming to the wedding? Well, dad'll have a job. Rana? Her dad passed away last year. Oh, what am I like? <laughs> oh, sorry, gotta take this. Stripper. Stripper? No, Lolly, we said no strippers. Lolly, I just took the phone down. You should let mum know about the wedding. Not now, please. Weird, isn't it? The way his buttocks move. Keats. Oh, Wordsworth. Poetry. Yeah, we, we got the reference, thanks. No, but is it appropriate? Is what appropriate? Having a naked man on a lesbian Hindu.
Well, I don't just cater to our Suffolk sisters. I take an all-inclusive attitude to oh, planning. I wish it was all-inclusive. <laughs> Free and available. No. Thank you. Oh, it started. Okay. We'll laugh about this. One day. <laughs> I can't believe you actually got that stripper's number. <laughs> oh, wow. Sebby, she needs to get a mole checked out. Oh, I bet you did. <laughs> well, it's kind of hardwired, isn't it, that bedside manner? <laughs> yeah, it is, actually. This key's running a bit low, because someone got greedy with the cocktails. Oh, in my defence, the lady pleasures were her to die for. Flaming apples. She could have given us a discount. She didn't even take a blaming cardi off. Well, it was not the stripper's fault. Let's face it, I could have had Ellen DeGeneres riding in on an elephant sprayed in gold and Rana still would have had something to bone about. Right! Shots, everyone, gather round! Michelle, you... Here we are. They'll have you right in no time. Come on. You tell them all we were coming. No, of course not. Come on. Mrs. Connor, just seen Dr. Gaddas. I so. And uh, she signed me off for another week. So I'll talk to Nick, please. Come yes, on. sir. You see the way they're all looking at me. Nobody's looking at you. No, no. They're just waiting to see their own doctor, OK? Just sit down. Look, we're amongst friends. Look, it's Moira. What do you think you're doing? We're not A&E. Hello, we don't take walk-in cases. No, I know. I understand that ordinarily not, no, but Carla's really not well and she's agitated. She needs to see a doctor. Oh, yes, as do all these people here who have appointments. I'm worried that she might hurt herself. Look, Carla, it's OK. Sorry. It's OK. Just sit down, love. OK. Look, would you walk around like this? Well, as I say, that's why you should go to A&E. Look, I get it. No one likes a three-hour wait in a room full of wine. Well, it's not about queue jumping, OK? Please, just cut me some slack here, OK? It took me an hour just to get her through these doors. Where's Rana? Beg pardon? Rana, this is where she works, isn't it? Uh, Moira, I've got this. She needs a proper assessment. Can you get the crisis team? Well, hang on. Can't she just see a doctor? No, a GP will only do what I'm doing. She needs assessing by a mental health specialist. Or a bullet. Yeah, but what if this section? I mean, she, she could be locked up for months. Look, she's frightened, Peter. You know, her, her grasp on reality is way off. How long? She's saying that Rana didn't really die. It was hard enough for me to get okay. here. I've lodged the request. And? And they're all out on calls. They're not sure when they can get to her. Well, tonight, tomorrow, next week, when? I don't enjoy saying no to people, Peter. I can't tell. But when they do get to her, she'll be in safe hands. Why don't you come to me? Hmm. I saw you earlier. Sneaking out. Booty call. No, of course not. Not that I blame you if you were. I would be going AWOL if I had a handsome, hunky lover waiting in the wings. I'd forgotten my lunch. Oh, yeah. Of course you had. But Imran's got a tidy little tush. Tush? Bottom. Oh, don't be so coy. What about its thighs? Oh, what about them? Mm. They're all manly and meaty, oh. nice and grippy. Oh. Do you know what, Moira? You really need to get a man of your own. Keep getting that look in your eye. What look? Like a dog that's just seen a whopping great juicy bone. I, I rang my bell. Your bell is neither use nor ornament. Frighten the life out of me, you did. you're coming through. Oh. Oh. Are you all right? Oh. It's I'm the injured party. I've hurt my wrist and dislodged my Oasis briquette. You dislodged your, your, your... Sorry, my, my English. Your what? My floral display is decimated. Oh. My bones are broken into a thousand tiny fragments. What's your prognosis? Don't ask me. I've not done bones yet. Oh. Look, I thought you had a minor burn or an abrasion. Maybe she should see a doctor. I do not need your advice. Thank you very much. Come with me. I'll fast track you since I was a first responder. Oh. The nurses will soon sort you out. Maybe it was just a little bit of bruising. <laughs> it's good you don't do any heavy work. You might think working in a florist is poncing around with flowers and ribbons, but let me tell you this. Nary a day goes by when I do not have to hump a box.
Don't tell anyone I brought you this. It's against the rules. Well, that's me, Maverick Moira. Well, I hope you've put some sugar in it, my poor nerves. Oh, talking about hot and sweet. We meet again. Actually, I'm glad you came. Sorry? You've been in an accident. You must be in shock. There you go. Okay. Just what the doctor ordered. Oh, oh, no, 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 sorry, I'm sorry, that's not allowed. No, honestly, Moira, what are you like? Playing fast and loose with health and safety. I just wanted to make sure that you're okay. Well, I'm still breathing, although my days of manipulating glove puppets may well be over. Well, if you need anything, anything at all, I'm at number 11, Coronation Street. I've just had a salad. I add my own sprinkles, nuts, and seeds. <laughs> Omega-3 to make my eyes sparkle. Not that I've had any complaints. Mm -hmm. That's... that's very good, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Cranberry and orange for me, please, Jenny. And a sweet sherry for the walking wounded. Come on, then. What's the story in Balamore? Ask him. It was an accident. Oh, forgiveness can be very healing, Mary. Oh, for the mind or limbs, i.e. a sprained wrist. Can I offer you a drink? Oh, what a gem. No, thank you. It would mean a lot to me, please. Because then I'd be beholden to someone with whom I am extremely angry. Ooh, well, that's a recipe for a headache. Well, the orchestra is already tuning up. Look, I am really sorry. OK, folks, who's paying? Sweet yam. By all means, treat me to a cranberry and orange. She's dead bold. So, how's life on planet Yan? Uh, it's very good, thank you. Can you believe I am still single? Uh... Yes. I'm so picky, you see. So is this your end of the week ritual? Pint of Newton Ridley? Yes, a quiet pint. Have a nice weekend. Well, ladies, it's 4.90. Bumping into you again. You on your own? Uh, no, actually. Personally, I hate drinking on my own. In fact, there are, there are lots of things I don't like doing on my own. Oh. If you get my drift. Oi! Part timer. It's called a lunch hour for a reason. Sorry, I'll be there in a minute. Yeah, well, you better be. Is something wrong? Oh, look. Moira, you're a really nice person, but there is somebody else. Uh, another woman? Yes. Um, I don't even think she's interested very much. No, no, no you don't she have to explain. I... It's not the first time I've been... Um, my dream's crushed. No, I won't bother you again. So, first lad that I went out with lived yeah. on road, and his name was Trevor Copton. Which is weird, because I did cop off with him. Anyway, he had this brace, and the first time that I properly snogged him, it caught on my lip, nearly ripped it off. Oh, that sounds painful. Yeah, it was. It wasn't much of a looker, though. Mind you, I wasn't the goddess that you now see before you. I had a bubble perm and looked like Ronald McDonald. <laughs> so I'm going to leave you with that image and just go powder my nose. Thank you. Is that her, then? Sorry? The other woman. No, I mean that I'm just friends. It's not what it looked like from where I was sitting. Yeah, I must say I am disappointed. Not to mention baffled why you would choose her over me. It must be a Polish thing, I suppose. No, look, Moira, Moira. There you Moira. go. <sighs> Thank you, cheers. <sighs> Please, Norris. This is important. Call me when you get this message. How many? How many what? How many messages have you left? Seven. And still no reply? Well, maybe you died. Tracy, that's my husband you're talking about. Well, it'll sort the divorce out. You'll be a widow. <sighs> Norris often goes offline. He doesn't like to be pestered. Which is exactly what you're doing with the divorce petition. I'm so sorry. I couldn't help overhearing. Oh, you having marriage troubles? Oh, not exactly. It's a complicated situation that needs a resolution. Time to draw a line and move on. Because you're still planning to marry someone else? Oh, my goodness me, no. But uh, I might be on the cusp of beginning a new relationship, and it's only fair to be clear and transparent. Really? <laughs> this new relationship? With Jan. 
You said cusp, so it's not actually begun yet. Oh, well, we're dating. He's already shared some of his tragic romantic history with me. I'm helping to uh, mend his broken heart. I see. I you and Jan? Yes, me and Jan. Yeah, exactly. So put out, eh? I could do the 15th. Friday. Wednesday. Wednesday. 15th of May. Oh, I'm on the wrong month. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I can't think straight today. Oh, problems at work. <sighs> no, it's my love life. Oh. No lack of it. Oh, Eileen, I am a woman of passion. I love fast, I love hard. And I've just had a glimpse of happiness cruelly snatched away. Do I know him? It's Jan. Jan? <sighs> Can you believe it? For a minute, I thought he was interested in you. Mm. <laughs> but uh, that's obviously ridiculous. Mm. Ridiculous. Mm. But then I overhear Mary talking about him in the cafe, and she's prepared to divorce her husband in order to be free. And apparently he's confided his traumatic love life in her, so she gets to be the one to mend his broken heart. Ah. Ah. Jan made up that story to let Mary down gently. He's not interested in her. He just didn't want to upset her. He's a really decent man. Good-looking and compassionate. Oh, I usually go for the bad boys, but he is clearly a unique and oh, complicated individual. Oh, he just needs to find the right woman. Mm. <laughs> oh, you tell such funny stories. Oh, and your Polish accent is so... What is his own accent I've got? Well, I could listen to it all night. Go on, say something. Say anything. I've got to go. I've got to go. Oh. I'm sorry, my darling, but I've got to go. What do you think you're doing? What? Me? I was just talking to Jan. Oh, why would you talk to him? You know he and I are friends. Look, I know this is difficult, but let's be honest. Men like Jan don't come to town very often, and when one does, I cannot deny myself the chance to connect. Well, Jan and I are dating. We have already connected. Well, I'm afraid you may find that Jan would rather be disconnected. Just too much of a nice guy to come out and say it. I think such a streak of decency should be applauded. You've got that totally wrong. No, Mary, you've got it wrong. That story he told you about losing the love of his life? He made it up. Never existed. He's trying to let you down gently. Oh. So sorry to be the one to tell you. Oh, you must be crushed. I have known the duplicity of weak men before. Oh, mm, Jan, weak. <laughs> have you seen his forearms? It was all down the front of my cassock. I was fuming. Oh, oh hello, Moira. The only for you, is it? Not that I'm complaining. Well, I come bearing tidings of bad news. A little biblical reference there. You're not going to believe this. Glow Honeyford's been spotted in better buys, banging on about now. You know the collection box in the medical centre? For the homeless charity. Someone's only got a nick tit. What? No, are you joking? Who would stoop so low? Stealing from the homeless, that's terrible. I mean, it's one thing if they're out there on the streets, you know, and they've fallen asleep and you can see the cash in, like, a hat or something. That was a joke. <coughs> well, some people get desperate, don't they? I mean, I've had folk nick off my collection plate. Shocking. There's been a spate of crime recently, verging on a wave. But who could have done it? Well, it must be someone local. Knew it was there. Pounced. Oh, I'll give myself the afternoon off. <sighs> Things really are going awry. First the collection box, and now Elizabeth reckons a load of her hair extensions have vanished. So we're looking for a thief with no taste. Have you heard back from the police anything about the robbery? Oh, I'm feeling really triggered. I'm having flashbacks. Really? Oh, please. Oh, there, now. Looking at the collection box and thinking, oh, look, so fancy. Fiddledy bobs, there is no collection box. Doesn't look like we'll see that money again. Ever? Is she all right? Oh, yeah, she's got a condition. Drama queen-itis. Are you okay? Clawing my way out of the black hole. Get in there. Get in there. 
I feel a bit sick. Mm, you do look a bit peaky now you mention it. You haven't gone vegan, have you? Because they can look very pasty. What about you, Sean? Do you know all? <clears throat> well, it could be coincidence, but... What? Well, I noticed that Paul seems to have had a bit of a windfall and, well, I mean, I, I think he might have taken the charity money. Well, he's got a record. He's been inside, hasn't he? Mm -hmm. And it looks immoral. Dickens would have had a field day with that one. He was in today. Who, oh, Dickens? He had a check-up. He was loitering. <laughs> Seems to make a quick call. Oh, I, I, I could be wrong. I, well, I've never felt the need to loiter. You can't go around accusing anyone, though, especially with no evidence. No, but sometimes you just know. I mean, I can smell guilt, and I bet he can as well. Or am I just being a bit vile? No, no, don't, don't second-guess yourself now. It's all getting a bit much, isn't it? Ah, I think I could do with another double brandy on the house, because I didn't expect this kind of stress when I came in. So... Maybe you should talk to Billy, see what he thinks. Oh, no, Billy will just think I'm being a troublemaker, and Paul, well, gift of the gab. He'll just charm his way. Oh, no, Billy will just think I'm being a troublemaker, and Paul, well, gift of the gab. He'll just charm his way out of it. Yeah, but if he did it... I know that boy, Tim. I know him. Oh, don't tell me, Sean. That Paul, he could dive into a bucket of sewage and he'd come up smelling of freezers. <sighs> no, I'm off, Ski. Call me back ASAP. Hey? Okay. Don't let the grass grow under my wedges. Oh. And who were you messaging? Just my contact at the feds. I told him everything I know. Well, not so much what I know. Sean knows. Cheers. Yes, you've just interrupted lunch with my boyfriend to accuse me of nicking some charity box. The police? <gasps> Whoa! Right first time. How did you possibly guess? Let me explain why. No, as if I don't know. What, you didn't think of talking to me before you went blabbing to the bill? I didn't. <laughs> don't lie to me. Moira, are you going to explain? I only called the authorities because you got me all convinced that he was the culprit. He painted quite the last in his picture. No, well, don't worry, love. He's got a way of manipulating folk to get what he wants. Oh, is that right? And what is it that I want? You're jealous of me and Billa because you're too pathetic to get a boyfriend of your own. <laughs> I'd rather be single than shacked up with some ex-con ex-paper boy. <laughs> Say that again. Easy, easy. Maybe you should go and cool down a bit. You'll get yours, mate. Well, thanks a bunch. Hello? Sean? Excuse me. Yes, me. How lovely to see you. What can I get you? I think Moira's ahead of me. Oh, we're not serving her. No, she dropped me right in it earlier. Nearly had my block knocked off. Oh. Let's have a look at your phone. What? What? My contract's up and I'm thinking... It'll be the biggest unicorn hire service in the entire Northwest. Mm. I must confess, I know how Sean feels. It can be frustrating having someone making decisions for you. But sometimes you need someone who can see the wood for the trees. Mm. Perhaps. Besides, if Paul is innocent, then the police will leave him alone. It's me that I'm worried about. How do you mean? Well, you saw how angry he was. He's not going to do anything stupid, not with the police sniffing around. <clears throat> Morning, Elizabeth. Hi. Oh, actually, well, it's nearly afternoon. Past the yard arm, if you fancy a tipple. Oh, uh. I've got to meet Eileen for lunch. Is the uh, hunkster still living with her? Hunkster? Yan. Oh, yum. <laughs> More like. <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, I'm not sure for how long. Oh? Is that a tiff? You are like a truffle pig when it comes to gossip. Oh, that's one of my many skills. Mm. Well, keep your snout out because there's none here. Yeah, but they were having a thing, though, weren't they? Mm. I felt vibes. All right, they had a tiny double. That was it. So he's a free agent? Trust me, Myra. You don't want to go there. I doubt very much you'd be interested, love. <laughs> I tried to stop her coming, but you know what she's like. The steamroller with lipstick. <sighs> so, what happened with Jan? Have you talked to him? Yeah, I have. He was out of work. I to support his mother. Um, so we brought some Valium over to sell. I mean, it's hardly dealing smack on the street corner. 
Still drug dealing, though, isn't it? He, t he said he was desperate and it was a one-off, and do you know what? I believe him. So are you still together? Dino's here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, do you question? Mm. What question? Oh, um, Liz was just admiring your shade of lipstick and I was agreeing. Mm. Oh, this old thing? Oh, it's just some kind of red. I'm not sure what it's called. Hollywood? Bombshell? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, OK, then. Such a shame Elizabeth had to leave. Yeah, poor Liz missing out on your company. Oh, I don't know. Bob Brown later for tea. She loves it when I surprise her. She was telling me you and Jan have fallen out. Was she now? He's not leaving, is he? No, um, he's a good lodger. You're just a lodger? Mm. Sleeping in his own room? Yeah, I'm just good friends. <laughs> oh, talk of the devil. Afternoon, ladies. <laughs> Mind if I join you? Please do. Well, I'll get another round and show you. I'll, I'll just go and help. You steamrollery cow. Are you a musical theatre fan? Um, no, not especially. I'm off to see Wicked in London at the weekend. I've got a spare ticket. Oh, I have a huge affinity with the main character, Alphabet. <laughs> His irrepressible nature is misunderstood by a world fundamentally scared of her powers. Sorry to interrupt this little tete -a -tete, but I've not been completely honest. You see, Jan and I, we are seeing each other, so get your mitts off. Are you okay with this? Well, why wouldn't I be? You're a good bloke, Jan. And after everything that's happened with Pat, you deserve a good bloke. Don't we all? Don't we all find someone, Moira? These good ones seem to be taken. What can I say? She stole my heart. I promise not to make you feel awkward in your own home. Does this mean that I can uh, get my old room back? It's a bit early for that. Right, I'll just ask you. Just have to see how things go. Mm -hmm. eh? oh. Get yourself on a dating app. But I hate all that swiping. Oh, traditionalist. Want to meet a man face to face, for our eyes to meet across a crowded bar. Hi. I'm Moira. Uh, Ben. Do you like musical theatre? Popular. I'll help you be popular. You'll hang with the right cohorts. You'll be good at sports. Know the slang you've got to know. So let's start, cos you've got an awfully long way to go. Yeah, I think it's probably time we're going, Mum. Maybe Moira could come back for tea? No. She's a bit older than you, but there's no wrong with that these days. I'm really sorry, Moira. We've got to be going. Oh, um, swap numbers? I don't think so. Bye. I don't understand. Attractive, intelligent, vivacious. And an amazing bosom. Much better than Maria's, I might add. Ugh, why do they all run away? You're asking the wrong person. Um, excuse me while I enjoy this rare moment of smugness. Cheers, Emma. Oh, I could watch you do that all day. So you've got a job to go to, have eh? Bank holiday. Yeah, have you done all right? I just thought I needed cheering up, which I didn't, so she took me shopping. Oh, that's nice. No, it's not when you spend the entire time sat outside a changing room while she decides whether she wants leopard print or zebra. Oh, quite the zoological quandary. <laughs> Where is she? Probably still there. Gave up, went to Fresh Coast. Three for two on tin peas. Oh, so she did manage to cheer you up in indirectly. I don't, didn't need cheering up. I just, <sighs> I just well, hop, hop. Eileen. Are you familiar with Hamlet at three, scene two? Methinks the lady doth protest too much. Methinks comes at the end. Oh. Jenny loves Kenneth Branagh. Oh. Not in any case. Are you sure you aren't just putting a bone face on things? We were all taken in by Anne, but none more than you. Must be a little humiliating. 
I just want a hot pot. Fine, then we'll have a few drinks. I'm going to put a smile on that face if it kills me. Good night. Is that middle name? Yeah. What is it? What are you doing? We'll see. Hi, Lee. How are you, Saul? Oh, I said. Oh, I hate Zeds. What's wrong with Zeds? Mm, Trixie. You feel so American. Right, I need some space to think. You want to talk about it? Talk about what? Mother's got you down. I'd rather stick pennies in my eyes. Oh, are we talking about yarn? No. Um, have you got another pen? The ink's gone on this one. Oh, you shouldn't blame yourself. You charmed us all. Yeah, you didn't let him into your house, into your bed. Same as Pat. I deserve everything I get. Eileen, can I have a word? In private. What do you think she wants? Well, maybe somebody died. Oh, she's a solicitor. What are you doing, anyway? It's a surprise for Eileen. I did it once for Elizabeth at the medical centre. What should I say? I did it once for my mechanised bat doll. Hey? And you've not seen... What was all that about? I'm her gin weasel. Hmm? Or, uh, I has wee gremlin. Not now, Moira. Nonsense. When I was a little girl, whenever I was feeling glum, my papa would make anagrams of my name. That would cheer you up. Um, wash me lingerie. That's my name. Yeah, with letters rearranged. It's fun, isn't it? Hey, uh, do you want a drink, Eileen? Yeah, she'll have the same again. Is it all right if you just take it off what I owe you again? No, no, it's not. No, I don't want a drink. I'm just trying to cheer you up. I don't need cheering up. Sorry for caring. You know, what's the anagram for annoying moron? All right, take it easy, Eileen. For what? You'll take more money off the rent? You make more deductions than Sherlock Holmes you do, I'm off. Oh, Alexander! Moira, you're looking really nice. I like your dress. Oh, this old thing? Yeah, I think the uh, colour really suits you. I think it goes with your eyes. You okay? No, no, actually, no, I'm not. I'm, that's why I'm here. Um, I don't suppose any chance she could sneak into your locals list today. Is it? It's just I'm, I'm feeling really rough. Sorry, no, she's fully booked. Come on, Moira, look for all time's sake, eh? Okay? Well, I won't be more than two minutes. No, it's against all the rules. Oh, I'll just have a look at her schedule. I've got five minutes now. If you want to come in, Ali. Uh. No, oh, it's OK. Actually, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see the local. I'm afraid Jen's completely booked up today, isn't she, Moira? Yeah. That's what I was just telling him. It's me or nothing, I'm afraid. Shall we? So I said to her, you should look at my re-gifting cupboard. You can't move for shortbread. Is there one in the top drawer? Have a look. Tins, obviously, not packets. <laughs> that would be embarrassing, wouldn't it? Gifting someone a packet of shortbread. We must have a board. Must be because people think I'm Scottish. Can we see someone, please? Um, Hope's got a hand. Oh, you need to make an appointment. Well, just because we're super efficient doesn't mean we're not about to be inundated any minute. Come on, let's see what we can do. Oh, thank you, Doctor. There you go. I thought it best to call you. Your nanny was in such a tears. Where are they? Dr. Gaddas. 